In this lesson, we're going to explore relations and functions. Let's begin by understanding what a relation is. A relation is simply a group of ordered pairs that show how input values are connected to output values. Here, we're looking at two sets of ordered pairs. In each pair, the x value is the input, and the y value is the output. The x values together make up the domain, while the y values form the range. Step 1. Identifying the domain and range reps. Let's take a look at the first relation. We'll start with the domain, which includes all the x values. Listing them in increasing order, negative 4, 1, and 3. Now for the range, we'll list all the y values, 0, 2, and 5. Now looking at the second relation, the x values or domain are negative 3, 0, and 4. The y values or range are 1, 2, 3, and 6. That's how we pull the domain and range from a set of ordered pairs. Next, how can we decide if the relation represents a function? A relation is considered a function only if every input is linked to exactly one output. If any input is tied to more than one output, it is not a function. Let's look at the first example. The ordered pairs are 3, 0, negative 4, 5, and 1, 2. Each x value appears just once and connects to a single y value. So this is a function. Now check out the second set. 0, 3, 4, 1, negative 3, 2, and again 0, 6. Notice that the input value 0 shows up twice, once with 3 and again with 6. This creates a conflict, so this relation is not a function. The key idea, if an input value repeats with different outputs, it fails the function test. Now let's take a look at the second question, which asks us to create a mapping diagram. Let's begin by looking at the first relation on the left side. We're going to identify the domain and the range. For the domain, we have the input values, negative 2, 1, and 3. For the range, we have the output values, negative 5, 0, and 3. In this relation, negative 2 is paired with 0, 1 is paired with 3, 3 is paired with negative 5. Each input matches with exactly one output. Since no input is repeated with a different output, we can say that this is a function. Now let's move to the second relation. We're going to use a mapping diagram again. For the domain, we have negative 2, 0, 3. For the range, we have negative 1, 1, 2, 4. In this relation, negative 2 map to positive 1, 0 map to 4, 0 map also to negative 1, and 3 map to 2. Here we can see that the input 0 is repeated and paired with two different outputs. Because one input gives two different outputs, this relation is not a function. Now let's examine another relation by creating a function table. We'll list the input values and match them with their outputs. These represent the domain and range. The input values are negative 2, 1, 1 again, 3, and 5. In this relation, negative 2 is paired with 3, 1 is paired with 5, and 2, 3 is paired with 7, and 5 is paired with negative 4. Since the input 1 is paired with 2 and also with 4, we have one input giving different outputs. That tells us this relation is not a function.
Let's start by analyzing the first graph. If you draw a vertical line anywhere on it, you'll see that the line only touches the graph at one point. That means the relation passes the vertical line test. So yes, it is a function. Now let's move on to the second graph, which is on the right. When we draw a vertical line, we notice that it touches the graph in three different places. Since one vertical line intersects the graph more than once, this relation does not represent a function. Now on to the third graph, labeled C. If we draw a vertical line here, it only intersects the graph at one point, which means it is a function. Finally, let's look at the last graph, which shows a circle. If we draw a vertical line through it, we can see that the line touches the circle in two different spots. Because a vertical line hits more than one point, this graph does not represent a function. In summary, if any vertical line hits a graph more than once, the graph does not represent a function. If it only touches once, then it does. That's it. You've just learned how to analyze relations and determine whether they're functions using ordered pairs, mapping diagrams, tables, and the vertical line test on graphs.